Let's talk about the effects that you're going to need to create a successful busking file. Just like our palettes and our presets, I don't need a large number of effects to get a very big impact on stage. I always approach effects as I approach everything else on this desk by using the idea of that IFCB, intensity, focus, color, and beam, which is how the desk breaks down all the different types of parameters. I'm going to make sure that I have four types of intensity effects, some focus effects, a few color effects, and I actually only use one beam effect in my stock effects, and then I'll add more as necessary. If you're just getting up and running, there are some great stock effects that you can use right out of the gate that come stock with EOS that you can use uh, in your file. I've actually gone ahead in this file and I've already copied some to the effects numbers that I want to use. So these first effects, effects one through four, uh, are based on the idea that there are only really four types of intensity effects. There's a sine effect, or in this case it's a cosine, a step effect, a ramp effect, and a burst effect. So in this case, I'm using the cosine. This particular cosine goes below the line. In our effects engine, if this center line here is your background state or where the light currently is, I only want my intensity effects to go below that line because I don't want any output on stage unless I have my intensity handle up. So right here, looking at this, it's a cosine effect with a scale of 100. And what that means is that if I am running this effect and I have my lights up at full, these lights are going to fade in and fade out in a sine wave effect, right, smooth fade in, smooth fade out, from 0 to 100. But it's always going to act relative to wherever my fader is. This means I can run a bunch of effects before the lights are on and then turn on the lights and already have them being running these effects. The next type is a, of effect is a step effect. This is an effect that goes from my background state to 0. And it's a very hard cut. It's what we, you know, a, a chase or a marquee chase, um, those sorts of things that have the hard edges to them. Those are our step effects. Next we have ramp effects. Ramp effects go from our background state to zero. So it's a fade in and a snap out. Fade in, snap out. Fade in, snap out. And the final type of effect is a burst effect. A burst effect is the inverse of a ramp effect. So it snaps on and fades out. Snaps on and fades out. So it's a good way to do a, a, ch a bit of a chase with a fade trail or something like that. And those are the only four types of effects that I'll use. Uh, in fact, in my whole file, I only use effects 1 through 4, and then I will use effects 1.2, 2.2, 3.2, and 4.2 uh, if I want to manage some additional grouping and stuff like that and make sure that everything's not lumped together in one large basket. I have a couple strobe effects in here as well that I'm using. Uh, this effect here takes us from a, whatever our background state is, our full or wherever we set it, to zero. I use these on strobe lights and blinders when I'm doing a random strobe because this allows me to control the intensity of that strobe from the fader rather than running the effect and having it, if I need to adjust that intensity on the fly, like maybe it's too bright, or on doing something on camera and the, the camera is sensitive to it, I can, I can adjust that from the fader rather than at the effect level. And then my four types of focus effects that I use, I have a circle. This is a very simple effect, but really effective, and it always looks good. I have a reverse circle. If I want, I can alternate lights going in different directions. makes it really dynamic. I have a pan-only effect, which is basically pan left to right, but no tilt. And I have the same thing for tilt. Tilt up and down, but no pan. Um, I like using these effects because it will overwrite both the pan and the tilt parameters. If I'm running a circle effect, and I only put a pan sine wave on it, my, my circle is still going to be running in my tilt and vice versa. By using these left and right and up and down effects of the tilt and the pan um, over the other parameter, I can make sure that I can completely take over that other effect and do what I w get to that known state, that known effect state instantly. Also in the idea of sine wave effects is I have a zoom sine wave. This is a full sine wave. It goes both above and below the line because I want to take my zoom from wherever it is and I want to zoom it in and I want to zoom it out, which means if I set my zoom at medium, I'll go from wide all the way narrow and vice versa. And if you want, I don't have it in this file, but if you want, you can make those various iterations of that here and it still applies. Snapping full and fading out, fading up and snapping back, that all works as well. And I have that same idea for color. Uh, we're going to talk about color a little bit at the end of the video. However, here you can see I'm still using those same basic ideas. A color sine wave, a color step, a color ramp, and a color burst. Now here I'm using absolute effects to accomplish this. 
because I'm referencing my color palettes rather than a background value that's on stage. Um, and I don't only want to affect one parameter. So regardless of what light I run it on, I want it to go from palette A to palette B. So I have two sets of these. So for my color effects, I use two different types of effects. And they're all only two steps each. The first one goes between an A color and a B color, whatever you want those colors to be. So it's going to go from color palette 1 to color palette 2, let's say. I actually iterate those in my four sine, wave, ramp, and burst styles. And then I have another type of color effect that goes from the background state to another color. This one we're looking at here happens to go from our background state to white. And that means if I run this, um, whatever color I run it over, it's going to be a white chase over whatever color is already on those fixtures. So make as many of these as you need, but between going between a color and a background state and a two color effect, you can accomplish just about anything you want.